The other day I was reading a printed book on the subway, not this one, but this will do. And I didn't have a pen or a pencil to highlight part here of the book. Before I was usually recording it to uh, voice notes, but this one was a long one and I I didn't want to just <laughs> stand there <laughs> and keep dictating something to my phone. So this is what I did. I'm at page 87 of the book Algorithms to Live By. Okay, now that I created this note, I can tap here and add a, take a picture. However, voice note doesn't have the cropping feature to crop the page, crop the image. And what I'm doing is going to uh, Google Photos, cropping it and come and getting back to voice notes. So this is what I did. I took a picture, cropped it. So let's add it here. Choose from library. Here it is. And we'll now have some fun with the AI. Can you please transcribe the content of the image on the note uh, about page 87 of the book Algorithms to Live By? Okay. I think it got it. It's a long text. Let's close this. And let's try something different. According to my notes, if I'm working on a paper, should I uh, go multiple times to a library and take a look at the books? or check out all the books I need at once. This is a hard one. It, it's explained it on the text I just uploaded to voice notes. Okay. Let's listen. Based on your notes, it's more efficient to check out all the books you need at once, rather than making multiple trips to the library. This approach is akin to the concept of cache in computing. Okay. What note is that? The analogy about minimizing library trips to enhance productivity was found in the note related to reading Algorithms to Live By and discussing memory management. Can you show me the note? <laughs> no, <laughs> of course it has it, some limitations, but it, this was pretty cool. Okay, now let's try doing the same thing on every note. And look, I'm not trying to compare the two of them because I, I, I think they, they exist for completely, entirely different reasons. The way they do things is, different and I'll talk more about this at the end of the video. My goal here today is to show you the differences in what one does better than the other or rather different than the other so that you can choose the best one for your needs or maybe use both like I do. But before that, if you want to try voice notes, please use my affiliate link even if you're trying the free one. That helps a lot. Okay, let's do it on Evernote. The cool thing about Evernote is that we can do everything inside the same app. All we have to do is choose scan, hold it like this, pointing it at a book, for example. And then we can even choose the little thumbnail here and crop it. Let's remove this and this. This is exactly what I did. Uh, on the other image I added to voice notes. So let's save this. Okay, what I'm gonna do is go to the computer because it's gonna be much easier to show you everything that I wanna show. Let's use the Evernote app here. 
a bunch of you asked for more light on my videos. I hope all this is enough. <laughs> okay, let's talk about uh, how Evernote deals with text. There are two features. There's this one that always existed, which is the OCR. So if everything went according to the plan, even without clicking here, I didn't do it. We'll search for a word on this text, let's say Moore's Law, and Evernote has to find it. So let's switch to this one here. And let's do here, let's make sure we are at standard Moore's Law. Okay, this is OCR, has nothing to do with AI. That's why it found this. However, because there is no AI here, I don't think it will find anything if I ask that same question. So let's try that. Let's switch to AI powered search. And if I'm working on a paper, would it be better to go to a library multiple times or check out all the books I need to do my research? I'm not adding based on my notes because everything on Evernote's AI search is based on my notes. So let's try that. Okay, <laughs> it has a, a clipping. Oh, this is kind of unfair <laughs> because it has another clipping of the book. So let's take a look at what it looked at. So it this one, this one, okay. This one is the one we, so if I'm working about E, it would be better to check out all the books needed to do the research at once. Let's read more. According to the book algorithms to lead by, okay, that's pretty cool. It's the same, but what if I delete this note here? Go to trash. Uh, I'm just going to copy this. You know what? I'm going to exit Evernote and come back. Okay, it got it right, even though I deleted that note. So it means that it is sending the OCR of this clip that page here, this picture, to the AI language model. I don't even need to transcribe this. I was under the impression that it wouldn't do that. It would only do it after I transcribe. So this is something really good, very good news. I love this. <laughs> so cool. <Man. laughs> wow. I can't wait to see. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I want to talk about the, uh, the Federico's tweet and of voice notes, which one should you use? Okay, let's let's do that now. First of all, let's understand how AI works on both of them. Every note, as for the recording of this video, is always opt in. And no, I don't know anything. I'm just <laughs> telling this because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. We never know. But for now, every note asks you permission to transcribe text from a, a printed book like that one, audio from a recording, and will also ask you permission to send some of your notes to the model to bring back, to send you back uh, an answer. And the way it does that is by searching your notes first. So here, here's a, a recap of how AI uh, search works on Evernote. When we ask something to Evernote, Evernote will send that question to the model. The model will convert that into a, uh, an advanced search on Evernote. That advanced search will select a bunch of notes and then send those notes to the AI. And then the AI will send us uh, the answer. That's how it works. Okay. But the transcription. Uh, it's not a transcription, the OCR, it's a layer that just uh, has this text uh, overlaid 
this was there from almost the very beginning. This was part of Evernote's core, the idea of uh, trying to find anything in your notes. So this is like a layer uh, of editable tags that is applied over things like a, a, a picture of a book, a, a label, or whatever it is that has text will get this layer over it. And this is readable text. So this is there. No matter what you, you do, there's no opt out. This is always there. This was always there. But there is nothing like that for audio. So if you don't tap, click that transcribe audio button, Evernote has no idea of what that audio is about. And when you send a question to the AI powered search, that question will not look into that audio. Okay. So this is a huge difference when compared to voice notes, because and as the name implies, all the notes came or come from voice. You have to dictate them. And voice notes is based on AI. Everything is AI there. So in a way, all your notes are searchable. It's a completely different approach to note taking. And if you are interested in understanding how uh, privacy and how this works, uh, you should watch my conversation with the one of the co-founders. It's a pretty cool conversation. So uh, everything we ask to voice notes will look for the answer. Every time we ask for something on voice notes, the AI will look for the answer on all our notes. So you can see how different this is, the way both of them work. Now, there's another difference too. As you saw, Evernote is for now, again, I don't know anything about the future, but for now, it is text-based. You have to type everything, you have to write everything, you have to write your questions, everything is typed or, or written. Voice notes, it's all about voice. There's not even a way to create a note, uh, type in the note, you have to dictate that note always. At least I could never find a way to do that. <laughs> There's, sometimes I just want to type, but it's not possible. So th this is another important point that you, you have to keep in mind. Let's go back to the beginning of the video. Uh, if, when I'm on a subway reading, uh, I, there, there's not enough hands to hold everything. I'm already holding a book and I have the phone on the other hand. How will I type? There's no way to do that. So uh, uh, taking a note with my voice and then taking a picture is a much easier way to do it. If I'm here on my desk, it's a completely different story. So I, I think it comes down to how are you uh, how do you want to or need to interact with the app? Where are you when you are interacting with that app? And if we stop to think about it, maybe they could be could be beneficial for both of them if they start borrowing things, features from each other. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible because it's a completely different approach, but at least maybe some voice on Evernote, asking questions with our voice. Hey, Evernote, that would be cool. And we don't know what's coming up next. Federico is teasing us on Twitter, talking about new AI features. Let's see. Anyway, I really enjoyed producing this one. If you think it was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to help even more, you can support me on Patreon, here on YouTube, or even buy me a coffee. Thanks for watching. See you soon.